everyone, John from ARTV. It's time for a review of album number three, which also happens to be called Three by electronic and trip-hop duo Fantagram. This new one obviously being a follow-up to 2014's Voices, which I was a bit mixed on, but I really did love some of the singles, like Blackout Days, and of course the excellent Fall in Love. Even Bill Murray on that record I thought was fantastic, but unfortunately it just didn't captivate me for the entire listen, and I had that problem with some of their debut but I did favor eyelid movies over voices and with album number three we see them more on the track to pop stardom perhaps and I see a lot of these indie duos taking that twist I mean just look at chairlift earlier this year with their single to ching and now sleigh bells moving on to something poppier and I'm excited to see what they're gonna do with that LP it's an exciting year for duos and fanagram I am happy to say absolutely killed it with this new project really loving the sound here just electronics mixed with pop and sprinkling in some guitars, other instruments. It's just a really solid and fun listen. It's got emotive stuff and it also has more grounded, poppy, just something that's very earwormy. And I like that they have that presence and can rotate male and female vocals. I tend to like Sarah's voice a bit more, but that's probably just because I honestly tend to prefer the female voice. Now with Fanagram, I hadn't been that outspoken with my feelings on them in the past. Somehow I let voices slip through the cracks, never gave it a review, and I was determined to listen to three. I didn't know if I was going to give it a review or not, but I knew after my first listen or two, I was like, I have to at least sit down and talk about it for a few minutes. Fanagram for me were like that friend that you like to hang out with from time to time, and you think they're cool, you respect them, you have no issue with them. It's just something keeps you from like making the call or shooting that text over them to make plans. And finally, with this time, I'm ready to send the text. I'm ready to hang out. Fanagram, you can come hang out in the eardrums anytime. This is a very captivating listen. Now with three, what does it do right? Well, like I said before, it balances emotion and fun. And I think even some of these tracks play that fun aspect to the forefront musically, but then they mix in a little bit of a twist. And the biggest track that I have to highlight here is Your Mine. Holy fuck, this is one of the catchiest songs that I have heard all year. Talk about getting stuck inside of your head instantly. Just the build up on that track, the release, the drop is so weird and cool. It's very unique. And I love the lyrical content on it as well and how it switches from the female to male perspective. It's all about jealousy. You're calling someone mine. Like, hey, nobody else is getting that kind of attention that I do. That should be for me. Save that for me. Nope, nope, don't bother with them. Let's focus on us here. Seriously, that flowing synth, the big electronics on this thing, the vocals that are switching back and forth, it's all encapsulating. It's just a mesmerizing listen. I can't take my ears off of it. And I think the same thing about several of these other tracks. It gets off to a very, very solid start three songs back to back that I genuinely love. Funeral Pyre is the first of those and I love how it starts off kind of subdued and then it really starts to work in this eerie feel to it. The lyrical content on this entire record, honestly not what I was expecting, but really, really enjoyable. I think that they get in with some weird stories. They kind of get inside your head and go from different perspectives, something that I haven't necessarily seen from them as much in the past, but I love that they're playing up this weird element even more. Even though they're going for the poppier style, maybe musically, they're still letting those traces of just weirdness and embracing it and I think if you can do that mix the two elements then you're doing something right and that track is all about it and the outro on Funeral it's just phenomenal. I love the way that it builds up all of those instruments and just kind of releases and then shuffles perfectly into same old blues, which samples a gospel song and pulls it off in excellent fashion. Seriously, the beat drop on that thing, one of the best that I have heard all year. Just an all out eargasm. It drops in that deep bass and the buzzing synth line and the howling guitars, which are something that I love seeing pop up on this record. They do it on a couple of those tracks here. Run Run Blood is another one that comes to mind where they just really bring in that thick instrumentation. Seeing that they do have those electronic instruments, obviously they make big use of the synth programming that they can bring in the bass and the guitars as well and pull it off in extremely good fashion. Now with Run Run Blood, that is one that I just did not expect. Like I was talking about, that kind of odd, intricate side to the band, it comes out lyrically here. And we see a weird lyrical pattern that it follows, especially in the first part of the song. But I love the chorus on this thing. It's catchy as hell in a weird way. And even though 
although it is nearly five minutes long, I find myself thoroughly entertained nearly the entire time. There's a few that get a bit repetitive for me, like calling all that closes this thing out. I don't care for Sarah's vocals on that one as much. It does get a bit monotonous there, and I think Barking Dog blends together as well. I'm not a huge fan of Josh on that track, just the way that he sounds. I understand what they were trying to get across with the message of the track. It's just not really hitting me in any kind of way, but fortunately we do have other tracks. We don't just have gaps in the middle of this record between all of these great songs that I'm talking about. There's great ones like Answer. I love that one. It's really just demanding that somebody finally commit, just finally sit down and talk. And the way that that one plays it up musically, one of the most interesting songs on this entire LP. And then even Destroyer, track number nine, right before the end of this thing. I'm really finding myself drawn to that the more I listen to three. Overall, I think this is a fantastic listen. I think the lead single, which I have not talked about yet somehow, You Don't Get Me High Anymore, set the bar really high, but they managed to top it with some of the other tracks here, and I would love to see these cross over to maybe more mainstream success. Their last album, Voices, actually sold surprisingly well. Over 100,000 copies in the US, it debuted at number 11 on the Billboard 200 charts. Overall, even though there are some speed bumps here, some moments that maybe you won't come back to quite as much, maybe they don't have as much of a replay factor or shelf life, and maybe some of them are a bit more skippable. Overall, I have to say that they really stepped up their game for three, and I'm giving this a four out of five. I hope you guys enjoyed getting a quick snapshot of what I thought of Fanagrams 3. Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments section down below, and while you're here, maybe smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, because friends don't let friends go unsubscribed, and you can find me on all of my social media over here at these, and the links are in the description down below. Stay up to date on all things ARTV. Check out a recent review that I did, or another one that you might like. Click those annotations directly below me. Other than that, I will see you guys very soon right here on ARTV.